down to no meat left. Line upon line in the word, make you respect. History collegiate when we teach it, brains reset. You listening to precept on precepts. Kept the shim, break it down to no meat left. Line upon line, the word make you respect. History collegiate when we teach it, brains reset. Putting in the work for the most high. Valley of the bones coming back and we gon' ride. Showing you our past didn't start with that boat ride. We a nation made of kings, yeah, we chose right. Bringing our identity back. We the praise of the Lord, they pretend to be that. You sure it is something special, they can never be that. We raise avengers with the knowledge so our enemies crack. In fact, listen to the class in the topic. Bomb subject matter, breakdowns atomic. Gathering the people to hold duty and profits. Israel united in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel united in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Hey, most high in Christ, bless. Welcome to another edition of Precept Upon Precept. We just followed up with FCN. Shout out to FCN, Captain Sakar, Captain Zavaris. Uh, we are your hosts. I'm Captain Shim. And to our left. Officer Matthew. Officer Mikael. So all praises. Look, you you heard us last, the last damn near month. We covered Kazakhstan. We covered three-part series on the war and rumors of war with between Russia and the United States and their allies, NATO. Now, we this month to this month here is uh, February, and in February it is the white man allows you to have a month that just so happens to be conveniently the shortest month every year, right? And so it's Black History. So. In the spirit of, because, you know, not to minimize our forefathers' history, you got Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Stokely Carmichael, uh, the, the big names, Harriet Tubman. You have, um, who else, Sojourner Truth, uh, Tucson La Overture. These are names that a lot of, Nat Turner, right? Um, but there are a lot of other names, A, who will never get mentioned because the story never got told. But there are also uh, prominent historical figures who are and more impressive, but they don't want you to know about it because they don't want you to see yourself uh, as a hero. See yourself as winning. They always want to see like you lost. So tonight's show, we're going to get into um, a great man in history. Uh, his name was Robert Smalls. Can we put a put the meme up? Officer Mikiel keeps coming with the the fire memes now. Black history. Did Harriet steal a warship? No, but he did. So what does that mean? I want you. I'm going to read the title again. Black history. Did Har you know who Harriet? We talk about Harriet Tubman. Y'all know. And when you be said Black Harriet, you know what she did, right? Did Did Harriet steal a warship? No, but he did. The Robert Smalls story, and this is his story. That's why we do history. All right. So first thing we want to do is this. Please open up. We're going to write down the list, tech team. Number one, I want the doggone movie trailer. All right. It's the first one. It's a small, uh, uh, no pun intended, it's a short uh, feature. All right. I'm going for my coffee. And tech team, they're doing a job. I'm going to do this because I, I, it's late at night. All right. All praises. So we go, okay, okay, real quick, while we get that, uh, you got it? All right, all praise the Lord.
Pause. Um, so the reason why we want to start here is because, uh, and, and, and it couples with what's going on today in IUIC, because there were writers who are beginning to think about making a, an actual movie, and I don't know if it's going to make it to the, the mainstream, but the point is that these are stories that need to be told, and that's why shout out to Captain Isaac and all the brothers who are on the Matthew 213 Project. Uh, donate to that if you haven't already, because we can do movies like this, and we could actually make a, a, our version of the movie about Robert Smalls, and that could, what it could do is it could tell the story, and at the end of the movie, we could say, do a narration like Robert Smalls died not knowing he was an Israelite. Then we could plug the truth. We can make a movie that black people know about, like this guy. Some black historians know, uh, historians know about him. And then we can come on our end and give our cut as they're in the movie theater still finishing their popcorn. Then we can plug our truth part to it. So all praise the Lord. So with that, we're going to get started off tonight's show. We got a lot of articles going on. Uh, we got Officer Matt in the house, Officer Mikael. And um, this guy is just... Y'all going to have a, we might do two parts on y'all going to be very, those of you who never heard of Robert, you're going to be very happy to learn about this brother. You know what I'm saying? He's a powerful brother. Powerful. So. You know what's heavy about this? These stories need to be told because Esau has this whole ideology going on right now, critical race theory, where they're trying to erase all of this history because it makes them feel bad. Guess what? You're going to feel bad because the Israelites ain't going nowhere. And we're going to keep telling these stories. We're going to keep telling the truth in the Bible. We're going to keep bringing it out because y'all got to go. Yeah. And to all y'all coon black people that was getting mad because they had statues up, you you shot yourself in the foot. I like them statues. I like going to uh to Jackson Square and showing my child, like, hey, you see that person right there? That's the devil. You, you know what they did? Do you see that man right there? You know what he did to our people? And they be like, man, that's messed up. Yeah, I got proof and, and an image to point to them. Right. So they could see an image of a masochist, uh, uh, of a of a mass murdering maniac. But now, you know, y'all want to talk about the critical race theory. So we, But, but guess what? So None of that's going to stop anything. With critical race theory, right, they erase all the statues of the oppressors. You know what else they're going to start doing? There's the museum in Birmingham where they got the statues of the slaves in chains. Yeah. They're going to start taking those statues down too. Yeah. And with also with critical race theory, you're not going to be able to teach the Bible. Yeah, because they ain't start that stuff till we started coming out the, uh, the Bible with slavery. Yep. And, and the fact that it links to us, you know what I'm saying, to our history. They ain't start doing that then. But let's get, let's get into this. Uh, go to article number two. Let's talk about this brother, Robert Smalls, that nobody seems to talk about. See, they didn't put uh, Maya Angelou on a quarter. They tried to put Harriet Tubman on a, on a 20. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going to just say it because, you know, Cap, sometimes it's uncomfortable for black people to be honest with one another. Mm -hmm. Y'all downplay black men too much. Way too much. Y'all put so much, and we love our sisters. Y'all put so much emphasis on women that when any time that a man gets brought up, mm -hmm. y'all always, well, what about what, what about this person? What about that person? They've already been in, acknowledged in history. Everybody, they worshiping Harriet Tubman. Look at Dr. Umar Johnson. Yep. This wow. nigga praying over, I see, I see, I see. Uh, he praying over graves and spitting water right. on her grave. Like, I see, right. I see, I see. what happened to the black men that actually made a difference in our nation? What's that movie, y'all? If you, if you, this is a shot in the dark, Tech Team. There's a movie with um, Tyler Perry had a movie where at the end of the movie, the oldest black woman. On Cicely Tyson, family reunion. beautiful, yeah, oldest, beautiful. Family she's reunion. gorgeous to be that old. Medea's family and reunion. she brings all the wisdom and calls everybody there and gets everyone to hold hands. That shows the proof that this they this is a matriarchal doctrine being pushed on the black community. Right? Mm -hmm. If we get that, while we get that, give me numbers by the house of the fathers, um, because biblically, and to, to Officer Math's point, very good point. Biblically, the 12 tribes of Israel, during the time of Nehemiah when we separated, when you read towards the latter chapters, the 12 tribes of Israel 
was uh, censored, if you will, or um, what's the word? Um, what's it when you have is it censorship? What is it called? Not censored. The census. A census was done based upon the male line. Right. We're going to get the biblical proof right. If you can get that scripture for me real yes, quick. Sir. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Okay. And they assembled all the congregation together. So the, all the congregation did not mean just the men. They brought families of, 12, of the Israelites, families of the 12 tribe. They brought them all together. Read on. On the first day of the second month. What was that? It was the new moon. Read on. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. The pedigree, meaning the line, was the, of the families, meaning they had men, women and children, excuse me. But the pedigree was by the house of the father. And that's how the father was established. Here's the proof. Why, would a, why don't we take on a woman's name? You take on the man's name. Even in every society, it's known that. But why in the East Indian community, uh, the, in the Japanese and Chinese community, they say there is nothing like the relationship between the father and son. Mm -hmm. To the point where if, in China, if you have a boy, you are, you're given gifts. And if you have a girl, it's like, yeah, whatever. So it, it, everyone knows about that relationship. But the, when it comes to the black and Hispanic community, it's no one know daddy. No one know daddy. Daddy's just forgotten about. Read it again, please. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together. Yep. On the first day of the second month. Check that out. And they declared their pedigrees uh -huh. after their families by the house of their fathers. Also, the women were in agreement with that. Because guess what? Because the men led them. When you read in the book of Jeremiah 44, the women try to usurp authority, run their traps. Okay? And matter of fact, give me Jeremiah 44. I'm going to show you that where that damn spirit comes from. Jeremiah 44, this just came to me, off, off topic, but it, it is on topic, but uh, I didn't have this planned. Um, and this is where that spirit comes from, that woman dominated, I can, uh, well, it started in slavery when they tried to protect their boys from physical harm and made them physically strong as an ox, but weak as a doggone um, second grade friggin' schoolgirl. All right. You want to start at 15 or you want? Yeah, 15. Yes, exactly right. where I want to start. Uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Check this out. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods. So these men already knew what happened. So guess what a man of God's going to do? What? You did what? Get, you, get out the house. You're going to bring the incense that you had and any other thing you got. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to repent in front of everybody out here. That's what you, and, and with a blast to their ass, meaning with words, corrected her in front of every, what? But watch what happens. Read on. And all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the it, name on, of It says on verse, all the women that stood by, a great multitude. I mean, there was a a bunch of damn gaggling chickens running their mouth. And the men were starting to say, just you go over there, shut the hell up. And they all spoke to Jeremiah as a committee. Read. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. And that's where the men were supposed to step in and regulate stuff. And they followed the gods, and that's what Solomon did. King Solomon did the same crap. And follow behind, as mighty as he was, as rich as he was, as powerful, he did the same thing. So now in our repentance, what do we have to do? We have to understand it's the Father, the house of the Father. We got to take our role. That's why we're doing this show. Not that we wouldn't do a show on um, Harriet Tubman, but there's enough in the damn regular news about her, okay? I never heard nothing about Robert Smalls until like two, three years ago. And I should be ashamed of myself for not knowing more, okay? Um, you got that? Um, yes, sir. Watch this. We need you. Your sons and daughters need you. Did you understand what I just said? You were sold off and had no choice. Yes, but now it's time to stay. Take your place. Man, pause. Hold up the hell. Wait a minute. You see what the hell is going on here? 
there's another old woman older than her sitting down. The, and when you look at the, 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 the actual movie, there's a whole lot of old men. And guess how they portray them? Filthy hornballs. Hornballs with their own great nieces. Yep. That's how they portray them. You trying to tell me out of all those old so-called black men, ain't nobody wise there? Right. Yep. That's some evil stuff. That, and guess what? That spirit is a woman's spirit because Tyler Perry, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Isn't Tyler Perry men with men? They 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 assume that, but he was raised like the character Medea that he play is based off of two female family members of his. Okay, it's like a combining. But he was raised around women, so that's why he act like that. That's He's why he portrays effeminate. that. He's very effeminate. Let me say this, and this is to Tyler Perry. Listen, brother, you are Israelite. If, if if I don't know if you'd ever see this, but what you're doing is wrong, brother. And I'm not saying making black movies, we, that's empowering. When you're dressing up like a woman, you're breaking God's laws, brother, and you're taking on a feminine spirit. You're teaching other men to do that. That's wrong. You should, you, we should need to repent, make movies about, like, Robert Small. Make a movie about Robert Small's Tyler Perry. Make a movie about the strong black men. Okay, change the way you write movies, man. It's, it's not right, brother. Not to say that sisters didn't do their part. I'm not saying that. But what you're doing is you're emasculating black men, and it, it's not right. It's not right. Um, play on, please. Young black men, take your place. We need you. Your sons and daughters need you. Did you understand what I just said? You were sold off and had no choice. Yes, but now it's time to stay. Take your place. Now, starting now, starting now. All right, I had now. enough. I had enough. Hey, but Cap, but you want to know something though? Gosh, we hear that a lot. We hear that a lot. Black men, take y'all place, do your job, do what you're supposed to do. But the moment we start to do our job right. and actually run the community mm -hmm. the way God said to, you got a problem with it. Because That's it. why men like uh, Robert Smalls is never spoken of. Right. When we start to take our place, they call it toxic masculinity. Yes. Exactly. Now, hey. we're, now we're toxic when masculinity was absent. Hey, and right. you know what, Officer McGill? The same think tank probably came up with the damn coin, the coin, the phrase, um, what's the stupid racial thing again now? Critical race theory. They have critical race theory and toxic masculinity is the same crap. Okay? Yeah. It's a way to preserve white, uh, preserve white masculinity and uphold their uh what you call it. Give me first Samuel chapter two, just since we're on this real quick. Hey, and Cap, like, yes, like sir. you say, um, um, they say, you know, that feminist stuff is, is pushed to everybody. You know, it's not just to, but guess what? Black people are the ones that's most affected by it because white men don't allow their women to just run rampant. They could push feminism all they want yep. as long as they don't push it in their house and in their neighborhood. White men still run their house, their neighborhood, their businesses, everything. 100%. First Samuel chapter two, verse um, no, I'm sorry. Um, when he was about to die, hold up. Oh, first Kings two. I'm sorry, first Kings. My yeah, first Kings. Uh, first Samuel two. Uh, actions are weighed, but I want first yeah, first Kings. That's exactly what we want. First Kings chapter two, verse two. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore. And show thyself a man. Show thyself a man. And that's what we're, we're, we're intending to do now is to show that the black positive models that we had during slavery. And what you're going to find, we're gonna, we might do three parts. This guy, Robert Smalls, is to be savored, meaning we're not going to rush through this. I want this brother to be magnified. Okay, read on. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mightest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So that's why as we how we as repenting Israelites, we got to keep the commandments. Now, a lot of these brothers, they they were tired of oppression. They were tired of slavery. And they fought for freedom. Were they misguided? Yeah. 
do I do I, do we know that Robert Smalls maybe he might, maybe he did know he was an Israelite to a certain degree, but we do know one thing: with as we evolve in this truth, we got to take charge of our households and lead the house. Our women are very important. Let me just say this: y'all sisters that might be joining for the first, women are very important. You have your place. We're not trying to marginalize or minimize. Y'all are very important. You are created to help us b- rebuild the nation of Israel. So part of that is, is listen, Harry Tubman, we, we all know about Harry Tubman. Now we're about to learn about Robert Smalls. So get me, let's go back to that uh, article number two. You were getting into that. Yes, sir. Robert Smalls. Robert Smalls was an enslaved African American who became a politician serving in both South Carolina legislation legislator and the US House of Representatives. So the first thing we gotta understand, and Cap, I hope that this month we can get to that part of black history. He they just said that he was a politician. The man was born in eighteen thirty nine. He died in 1915. Right. Mm-hmm. When do you think he was a politician? He was a politician in the late 1800s. He was freed in 65 or emancipated, so-called, in 65. Mm-hmm. There's a reason the black codes came involved. It's because brothers like that, that, that got to high positions of authority very quickly coming out of slavery. We was very smart coming out of slavery. He was one of those men. Right, and, and you know what? He, not only was he, let me just say this. According to Esau, he wasn't smart because Robert Smalls was illiterate until the 1860s. But he was very, very wise. And his pursuit to be free made him utilize different types of intelligence. See, you have different types of intelligences. What he did to, to what you're going to learn about today took a special type of intelligence. And later on, he was so Smart in other ways, he learned to read in a couple of years as an adult. Quick, fast, boom, boom. Credible what you're going to find out about this guy. Hey, Cap, that shows you a difference of the mentality today. You know, yeah. Like then he was, he was determined to read and, and excel. Nowadays, we won't pick up a book to save our life. Facts. Look, so do, let's do this because um, it, it's, we showed that the fact that he, that's later on in his life. And it's, it, it's good sometimes we start at the end of the life. He ended up as a politician, a successful politician who changed a lot of policies for black folks in the U.S. And that was during the time of Jim Crow. He died in 1915. He lived for almost 75 years. Let's we're gonna, Remember, that's a great point. We're going to come back to his later life, probably in part two. We might touch on a little bit more. Let's start first with... Um, Officer Matt, touch real quick on his early life because it's something that I want to clear up just yes, in sir. case it's a bunch of demons out uh, there. Go back to the article. All right, early life. It says early life. Smalls was born to a house enslaved person. So his mama was a comfort girl or one of the girls that worked in the house, a house girl. Right? Linda Polite. And uh, what is that, Beaufort, South Carolina? Yep. On April 5th, 1839, the identity of his father is not officially known. Is not officially known. Is not officially known, but believed to be Henry McKee, the, uh, the son of a plantation owner. So the identity of his father is not known, but they're putting it as his father was the slave master. Or the slave master's son. So the, the 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 plantation owner would have been Robert Small's grandfather, but it's not officially known whether or not that was true. See, Esau Esau crafty with that cap. He's a devil. They crafty with that. And look, I'm 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 gonna send you a video, tech team, because there's a video I want you to see. This he's a quirky historian, but um, which video you got? The, the nerd dude? Okay, send that. Because this guy is a historian, and he says it. He says the same thing that that article said, because what, like Officer Matt said, the way you, you dismiss anything that a black man does 
to other black people, especially pro-black people, is, yo, his father was a slave master. <laughs> you just dismiss him. That's what we do. I, I first was about to do that. But I said, hold up. I begin to research more. This brother didn't have the spirit of Esau. Bob Marley got the spirit of Esau. Because the, the real rust is like Babylon come down, burn, fire, fire. Bob Marley said, let's get together and feel. Or That's a damn Edomite spirit. <laughs> you crazy as hell. The real brothers are like Babylon going to burn. We're going to take you down. Hey, security, make sure y'all they escort camp all the way home because them rosters going to be upset. Hey, I was in Jamaica. Right, hey. I ain't going to do that no more. Ever again. Ever again. I learned my lesson, Bishop. Um, uh, go ahead and where am I at? Yeah, li listen to this. So this, this dude is a history buff. He's a little bit of a nerd. Watch this. Come on. I'm the history guy. I have a degree in history, and I love history. Stop. Real quick, real quick. That's what I wanted. This guy is the history guy. You can research him. He has, he doesn't have an associate's degree in history. He is, a, he, is a, he is a historian. So when he says things, he researches it. And the reason why I want, I want a white man to tell you, so those of you who are still repenting, and some of us, we still, we need to hear from the white man to believe it. Believe it or not. Because if there's a brother up here, but when a white man says it, who has a history degree, now we got to take him seriously. They so can't like Bishop Yahweh seriously. say, hey, hey, so it's a white man saying this. Right. It's a white man talking. Right. Listen. Bishop Yahweh will pronounce the W-H <laughs> white. The white man is talking. Check this out. History 2, this is the channel for you. America is very excited right now about a new movie that's out that stars a black superhero. And of course, that's notable because black lead roles are really fairly uncommon in Hollywood movies and black superhero roles even more rare. And with no disrespect whatsoever to that film, what I would say as now, the pause. history guy... We're going to come back to this later on because there's something that was just dropped there that some of y'all probably missed it. But I'm going to show you. We're going to deal with it later. Play on is that if you wanted to make a film about a black superhero, you should have made a film about Robert Smalls, a man whose heroism throughout his life was so amazing that he deserved the title superhero if anyone ever did. Now stop. And his so the white man is telling you, why would you make a movie about this guy? You should have really made a movie about Robert Smalls. So now we got your attention because he said it. He told you that. Okay? Yeah, hey. And and I I pray somebody that that's of notoriety is watching this. Which one of y'all gonna pick up what Chad Bozeman left off and start to do movies about Robert Smalls and all of the other black figures right. in history that actually made an impact, like he did when he did uh, Jackie Robinson and Thurgood Marshall and all of these other characters that he played? Who gonna pick up the reins and keep it going to actually do something constructive and put a positive black image back out there? Right, and you know what? We ain't going to wait for them brothers. We, I, we hope they do do it, but we're going to have brothers like Captain Isaac and other great men the Lord going to raise up, and we're going to make biblical movies, and then we can, we can dip over, and we can make a movie about Robert Smalls and other great black revolutionaries, and then we can try to win them to, to, to their identity and their culture, right? Right. Um, play on. story deserves to be remembered. Robert Smalls was born into slavery in 1839 in Beaufort, South Carolina. His mother was a slave and Stop. his father... Stop. Number one, with black men, they'll always start with their mother. So you right away, there's no question about the moms. Oh, the moms, we know exactly who she is. She's a slave. How you know her mother's father wasn't white? How, how, my point is, they're so kind. Mother, blah, blah. Then you go, now his father. The, the seed of the father, which is where the name comes from. Now watch, now watch what he says, because a lot of people, people will hear a stupid article that a, that a, that a, uh, a associate's degree his, history class is right in a two-minute YouTube video, and you take that for, for as, your, as your source. Play. Father is not known, although it may well have been his owner, Henry McKee. Stop. So it says his father was not known, but hey. Just throw it out there. Might have been a slave father. 
So this guy is obviously a little bit more researched than these other videos. So don't take it at face value when they say his father was a slave master. Because later on, we're going to show you a picture of him. Robert Smalls, an actual photograph of him, is a dark-skinned man with full features. Now, I ain't saying that light-skinned people with full, can't have white father. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that they'll discredit the man by saying, oh, the reason why, like, like as is to say, the only reason why he was able, able to accomplish something great is because he's half white. And even though, he, because he was half white, he still was a slave. So it's like, yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's a Negro. We don't care about him. But the only reason why he was at all anything because he had a little bit of white blood in him. Hey, That's Cap, what they do. Not only that, but okay. as, as much as they downplay black men's uh, appearance in the family today, who's to say that they're not doing it right now with, with his biography? You know what I'm saying? His father probably... His mother was in the house. I mean, you don't really get in the house unless you're being taken advantage of or you're serving some sort of purpose in there. Who knows if they had a, a, a relationship, if she had a relationship before that. The man was killed because he didn't want his wife in the house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of that stuff. Like, there's a lot that could come into play with that. And the fact that they just throw it like, oh, his mother was definitely black, but right. Right. we don't know about his daddy. Or, or his dad could have looked like me. Okay? It could look like Officer Matt. Yep. And by the way, that's why they showed you the Huxtables. Mm -hmm. Because the, what's the light, the super bright one? Casper the Friendly Ghost. Denise. Sandra. Lord, Sandra was a Negro. Uh, Cliff yeah. and Cl uh, the mother yeah. was light. The, what's it, Claire? Claire Huxtable? Yeah, Claire. Dad was, Cl Cliff was dark. Theo came out dark. Lisa Bonet, what's her name, is... um. Denise. Denise. Denise, she came out light, and Sandra was damn look like damn they look like Becky. Yep. But they were both <laughs> they were black with two black parents. Hey. So don't don't let them fool you with that crap. Hey, Cap, and and his and Bill Cosby's dad, or in the or Cliff Huxley's yes! dad was was light skinned. Yes, yeah. and that dude, I remember he used to sit around and chew all slow and stuff. Yeah. We gotta teach some of these brothers Asa and them and Gabe to start chewing a little slower. A couple plump tech team members back there. Look at them. <laughs> All praise of both sides. All right, play on. When Robert was just 12 years old, his owner, McKee, started running him out as a day laborer, with, of course, McKee keeping the money. As Robert was interested okay. in the sea, so we, he started we just taking went most here of to thank you. We went here to show you that it is not, it is basically, we don't know about his father, but just in case you get any hopes up about a black man who, who could have taught him some values. We don't know who he is, and if he is, he's a slave master. So it was not confirmed. They take that and run with it. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as we move on today's show. Um, was that it on the other article? We had some more on that other article. We had, yeah, we had a lot. We had a lot going. Let's on go now. back. We gonna yeah. do. Uh, Y'all stay with us. Y'all, there's a lot on this brother. Okay. What we at? Yes, we can come back to that. Smalls was born to a house enslaved person, Linda Polite, in Beaufort, South Carolina, on April 5th, 1839. The identity of his father is not officially known, but believed to be Henry McKee, the son of the plantation of the plantation's owner. Smalls was raised in the McKee house and enjoyed a little more acceptance in the community. Yeah, just like uh, Nat Turner was. Read. On several occasions, he ignored the night curfew for black people and stayed out with his white companions, much to his mother's lament. Read on. We already know. As children, we get sucked into thinking that we just like Esau and we not. Right. So that, that's all it is. Go ahead. Back, back to the article. When Smalls was 12, the McKee family moved to Charleston, where Smalls was hired as a day laborer on the waterfront, working as a rigger and eventually a sailor. In 1856, he married Hannah Jones, an enslaved hotel maid who worked in Charleston. So remember, this dude worked as a day laborer on the waterfront as a rigger and eventually a sailor. All right, this dude knew about ships. That was his job. 
by trade. That's how he made a living. You about to say something? Yeah. Hey, go back to the article real quick. Just want want people to see something. Yeah. It says he married Hannah Jones, an enslaved hotel maid. So the point there is. We froze in tech team. There we go. The point there is, in that day and age, black men married black women. So Bring if his out. father was Bring it an out. Edomite, he would not have been attracted to a black woman. He would have thought he was better than her. So y- y'all, y'all got to pay attention to these things. And how do we know that his father could have been in his life for the first five years and taught him a lot of valuable lessons, and then the damn white man killed his ass, just like they did Malcolm X's father when he yep. was Malcolm Little. They ran. They they said he got hit in a train accident. They actually t- t- strapped him to the. They, they killed him and they threw him in front of a train. They did something terrible to him. Read about Malcolm uh, Malcolm X's biography. Um, you'll you'll find out that they did that to many black men, many many of us. Um, yeah, great point, Officer Mikael. Why would he? There was something set up where he saw that he needed, and he did it very young. At mm-hmm. seventeen, he got married. You don't. Where do you learn that from? Where, where do you learn that from? You learn that from seeing in your family line that. That was the right thing to do. Someone, a black man told you, listen, you stay with your kind. You take care, you marry that sister. You know what I mean? That's a very good point. And a lot of times we might, that's why we tell brothers in the street, on, hey, listen, you know, you're sleeping with the enemy. Well, because the enemy doesn't understand your struggle. They don't understand exactly. what you go through. Why would you want to sub, and that's the law, Deuteronomy chapter 7. That's the law. We're not supposed to marry the other nations. And that brother understood that. All right, he understood that. All praise the Lord. Carry on. Hey, real quick, can we look up a rigor and see actually see what that is? See what a rigor is? Because I got a feeling that that's just not the type of work Esau would be doing at all. Again, showing you <laughs> where his spirit is and uh, how he was rolling, how he was living, because of who he is. If he was the son of a uh, of an Edomite, um, man, he wouldn't. You got it? Put that up there. Let's see what the rigor is. So it says rigor. <laughs> it says a person who rigs or attends the rigging of a sailing ship. Where y'all going? Riggers move. Go ahead. Go. I love y'all tech team. Y'all got me all over the place. It says a person who rigs or attends to the rigging of a shelling ship, aircraft, or what is that, parachute? Scroll up to the other one. It says riggers move heavy heavy material and equipment around work sites using rigging gear such as pulleys, cranes, and winches. This is not the work that Esau would be doing, especially in the 1800s. This is hard labor. And you're going to find out that Robert Smalls had the most skills, and they would call them um, no, he, they would call him a wheel hand, meaning the ships had the wheels on them. So you just the wheel hand, you just the help. And the white men would be the, the steerers or the captains of the ship. The, they would have certain titles. If you was a black man, you could not have, you could not have a title and a position of authority. You had to be subservient. He was a slave, right? Um, do me a favor, pull up number four. We this show is flying. Pull up number four, the Smithsonian Magazine, which is um sorry number three, a Smithsonian article, and I want you to scroll down the interest of time. We're gonna go down to, um, the. Article uh, paragraph says, like so many enslaved people. I want to bring something out. Uh, I'll tell you right now. It's the one, two, very good. Third article down. We're going to read this because um, we're going to show you the scriptures right here. Come on. It says, like so many enslaved people, Smalls was haunted by the idea that his family, his wife Hannah, 
their four four year old daughter Elizabeth and their infant son Robert Jr. would be sold. So that was his fear. Now the twelve tribes of Israel are were and are under curses. If we read in the book, open up the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty eight. When y'all open this book up, y'all at home, some of y'all might, one or two of you, be watching for the first time, and you might say, you know what? Man, I don't believe this. Yeah, I, it's Black History. It's February. I just happened to click on this channel. Go to Deuteronomy 28. What we just read is biblical. And I'm going to show you. When you go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30, this literally is what Robert Smalls went through. The Bible is a living book but it's also a history book that now, because we saw the prophecies come true, that now prophetically is was their reality and now our history. Right? Check this out. The book De- of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 30. Thank you. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. And that was the fear. Because here you are, you're enslaved, enslaved you're working, and at any time... You might have heard in the because they they let us stay in shacks, so you could hear a lot of things. You don't think that they heard other brothers the next day in the field, you know what's wrong with you, bro? Oh man, and, and then he'd have to talk about it, you know, or he might not want to talk about it, and they might have heard something. That happened throughout these slave quarters. They would come in the, and they would lay with our women. Many times they did that. I'm not, now, by the way, I'm not subscribing to the fact that his father was a slave master. I'm just letting you know, these are fears. Read on. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Man, a lot of those slave houses where the white men would stay, we built and assisted them in building them. Read on. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. And vineyard represents planting. And that's what slavery was. Before the Industrial Revolution happened, that, once the machines came and they could mass produce clothing and textiles, the slave was not needed anymore. And industries replaced that. Now they needed people in the factories. But before that, they had to pick the cotton. They had to pick the sugarcane, indigo, uh, which is the purple dye that they made from plants. They had to pick the bananas, uh, what else, tobacco, other, other massive crops, they had to do that. That's why they needed us, to work for free, to get all of that. It was big business. And if, you're, if, you're, if the people who are giving you free labor, if something happens, them, just let them die. Sick the dogs on him. He's too old to work. Get yourself another nigger. Bring him on in, beat him down, make him lose his identity, and then what? Big business is right backing up. That's why you got to watch Roots, 12 Years a Slave, Django, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Watch these movies because there's so much truth in them. So with that, Israel, we're going to go take it to break. All praise the Lord. Stay with us. Precept upon precept Thursday night. Shalom. Cincinnati camp and I am here because I have a special announcement for you. It is almost that time again. Passover 2022. It is right around the corner. I am excited. I hope you are too. The dates are from March 31st through April the 4th. That's March 31st through April the 4th. So make sure you mark your calendars. This year's colors are brown and gold and make sure you visit originalroyalty.com to get your official garments. One more thing, Israel. 
Registration details will be available soon. Do not neglect to register. Make haste. And remember, never give up, never give in. Shalom. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I have an important message about your leaders in the Christian church. Your bishops, pastors, reverends, and ministers are all lying to you and leading you straight to damnation. The truth is, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are the biblical Israelites, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Jesus Christ is a black man with white wool hair, according to Revelation chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. We as the Israelites must keep the commandments in the faith of Christ to receive salvation, as it is written in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. I've challenged and debated Christian authorities all over the world on these issues. Not one of them has been able to negate this truth. Your pastors have led you astray, worshiping pagan holidays and false gods, just as in the days of old. So join us on our mission to restore the true nation of Israel before the decree goes forth. The work is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Visit our website at israelunite.org or call us at 855-484-4842 to learn more and visit our schools. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Welcome back. We're going to jump right back in. Uh, in case you're joining us, uh, this, this half of the show we're going into the history of Robert Smalls. We're starting with his early life. We're going to show you what he did to get the name uh, that he had and the great name, and then what he did later on in life. We'll probably do next show. You know, a, a, a can, yes, can. sir. We uplifting men today. Okay, Strong I'm gonna say it again. Men. I'm gonna say it again. Women get uplifted way too much, and right. men get downplayed way too much. Y'all want us back in our rifle spot? Shut up and listen to the class. This is men here. Y'all been looking for men y'all whole life. Now they're here. Now you're looking at them. If you don't like it, go to T.D. Jakes. I'm pretty sure his pork belly behind could satisfy your ears. Go ahead, Cap. Right. And you know what? I like that spirit because I'm going to tell you why. Because guess what Robert did on his journey? He saved black women. On his journey to steal, he's, the brother stole a warship from the Confederate Army. Okay, just, I'm going to just give you a spoiler real quick. Stole a Confederate warship, because he already knew the waters, fooled all of them Edomites, and before he got out of Confederate waters, he rescued eight families. Black women. He saved black women's lives. Facts. We're going to read. I'm telling you, this is some power. I want to get me a shirt. The day that he did, it's something May 28th, 1862. I want me a shirt that says that. Y'all know about that date? Because that's powerful. We're going to read about it. Um, I want to finish up Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Because, and then the, keep that article up what it says from Smithsonian, because we're showing you that we're taking the history and we're showing you that it's biblical. And the reason why is because a lot of you are watching for the first, second, third time. You're like, what's this about? And we always want to go back to the basics because the basics are how we know that our history is linked to this here book known as the Holy Bible. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters. Now, Robert Smalls had a son and a daughter. Read on. Shall be given unto another people. Robert Smalls feared day in and day out, what if my family gets broken apart? Now, why, why would you have to worry about that? If you were a slave, why would you have to worry about your family get broken apart? Maybe some tough times, you go without food. No, people physically took your children and sold them to another state, another city, another part of the country as a slave. Once you were marketable of marketable age, 8, 9, 10, whenever they seemed, they would break families apart. So now, that's biblical. Those of you who have heard this before, it's just reinforcement to your faith. Let's go back to the article and that where we left off our tech team. Jones already had one daughter, and together she and Smalls had a daughter and a son. So Robert was also a stepfather. 
many of you uh, a, a women good, like to say. A good, my, strong a man, black man stepping up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm a saying? Man, a man stepped up and actually took care of another man's responsibility. No matter, you know, that man could have died, got put to death, got sold off somewhere else, whatever might have happened. But guess what? He saved that black woman, took care of that black woman, and still reproduced with her. And mm. they guess grew a, a strong family and with a man as the head. And guess what? I bet she uplifted him and ain't had no problem with him leading the house. Oh, you doggone right she did. Right. And later on, we're going to find out she was in the spirit to help the mission. She, what she did, shout out to the sisters. This sister who knew her place, she did something that helped to save them at the end. And it was a support to the, the man's plan. The men, it wasn't just Robert Smalls, by excuse me. It wasn't just Robert Smalls, by the way, who did that. There was other black men with Robert Smalls who were also planned and made it happen. Robert Smalls just didn't do it by himself. So all you devils out there, let's just say you proved that he was a, his father was white. It don't matter. It was a bunch of black men with him that supported and motivated him. And if it wasn't for them, it could have never, one black man could never do it. All right. But I'm still under the notion that his father was a brother. All right. Um, read on. I, there's one other part I want to read it at before we move on. Um, do me a favor. Get me where it says, um, oh, gosh, the only way smalls. I think it's the next article. I'm, I'm, not, not the next, next paragraph. Excuse me. Um, it says the only way smalls could ensure that his family. Keep scrolling. We we might be reading a different Keep article. Scrolling. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, I think that's okay. that was the end of that. So one. I'm looking for the Smithsonian article, which is article number three. And we're gonna pull that up. While we wait to get that, let's go ahead and read Deuteronomy twenty eight, verse forty eight, because there's something that we're gonna read about that Robert Small, see the white man was a damn uh Twisted, twisted individual. Because what he did is he would allow you to buy your freedom at rates that uh, to Robert Smalls to buy his whole family's freedom was $800. The equivalent of that today was like $23,000. So the white man said, you could buy your freedom. But it was completely, if you make a dollar a week or, or $5 a week, you know how long it would take you? Decades upon decades. By that time... Some of your family died. That's how, that's how uh, uh, diabolical this man is. Okay? You got it? Check this out. The only way Smalls could ensure that his family would stay together was to escape slavery. This truth had occupied his mind for years as he searched for a plan with some chance of succeeding. But escape was hard enough for a single man. To flee with a young family in tow was nearly impossible. Enslaved families often did not live or work together. And an escape party that included children would slow the journey significantly and make discovery much more likely. So logistically, Robert Smalls, uh, let's, let's, I want to paint, paint a picture. He was a, sh uh, basically he, was, he did the work of a, of a rigger which was he was a ship hand, and he actually learned the routes because they were in um, um, the, the Confederate Army, which is the north and the south. They were the part of the south. He grew up in the south. And he worked for the Confederate Army and learned all of the routes and everything of that nature. So when it came time when, because what the white soldiers used to do is they were absolutely uh, very much irresponsible, they would get drunk and leave the ship. They said, all those niggas not going to do nothing. Leave the ship with the slaves. Oh, they don't know nothing. They can't, they can't even do nothing. Not knowing he was studying your ass the whole time and learned everything you knew and waited for your dumb ass. And what happened is he learned, and then it was time to move, and he moved. But this is the part I wanted to share. It's one thing for five brothers to escape at night. He stopped and coordinated the pickup of Women and small children. Guess what small children do at any sporadic time? Asa knows he doesn't get any sleep. They cry. So if you're trying to escape and the children cry, Harriet Tubman, by the way, used to drug babies. 
She used to have to drug babies because if you cry and give your position away, everybody could get killed. So think about that. He's like, I got to pick up all of these families. I have to coordinate. I have to tell these. I have to train these women. Listen, we come. You better figure out a way to keep these kids quiet. You, and then the sisters had to start to think, well, maybe I need to feed them at a certain time. How do I get them to sleep? When we get ready to get picked up, I can't have my babies cry. Maybe, maybe they had to tie their mouths. I don't know. But Robert had to train, and the brothers that with Robert, it wasn't just Robert, the brothers that had to train and coordinate the pickup of all those families with a warship. And by, by the way, they didn't just throw the babies in the ocean and they swam out. Hey, Robert, we're here. We're gonna. No, they had to stop the damn warship, go to another point, pick them up on land, and then get back out and go through five checkpoints. This is abs- This is why that white dude said if you make any movie, you should have made a superhero movie about Robert Smalls. So, y'all, also, don't just watch this show. Y'all, look at this stuff for yourselves. Look at how impressive. And don't, and again, don't let him dis- discredit the brother because they say his father would. Don't do that. Don't, don't get into that school of thought. Hey, and Cap, one of the things that's real heavy about what uh, Robert Smalls did, he took knowledge that he gained in Esau's system and used it to help his people. I think they kind of went over some heads. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. He, he used, used it, the knowledge that he gained, having to work in Esau's system to help his people. Uh huh. So those of y'all who have learned trades, because he was he was he was a rigger for a ship, and then eventually became a sailor. How was he able to go ahead and and get a warship and actually drive it correctly? Because he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He had learned that over time. So he just used that to help his people to escape the slavery that they was bound in. That's the same thing we got to do at our jobs. Whatever qualities, whatever skills y'all got, be like our forefathers that was in this country and use it to help your people out. Right. So gain that real knowledge and use that real knowledge to help your people in this captivity and leave that pseudo knowledge alone that you think you have. Exactly. Let's pick up with um, what it said, um, where it says uh, traveling with an infant was especially risky. Um, it's in, it's cut yes. in the middle. Of, here we go. Traveling with an infant was especially risky. A baby's cry could alert the slave patrols. So there were a whole group of white men set up that were slave patrols. Their job, like the fire department, is to go and find fires and put them out. You had the slave patrol. Their job is they had uh, watches, and they would go around, and if they had any word of a slave escape, they would go around and, and ground them up and grab them, okay? So there was things set up. To, this is why even a baby's cry. They hear yeah, cry. What the hell is that? All the white babies are in their safe white houses. So it got to be a slave baby out here in the middle of the night. So all these things Robert had to plan and train the women, and he coordinated all of that. Read on. This is beautiful. Read. And the punishment, if caught, was severe. Owners could legally have runaways whipped, shackled, or sold. So, and they knew later on, you got to find out that they knew if they get caught, they were all, they would have. Not just been, they might have sold a couple of them because you don't sell all of your slaves. They're your property, right? Bad business, right? He saw. But you take one or two of them and they get dismembered, like Willie Lynch did, just to teach the other ones, you niggas ever get an idea of trying to steal a boat and get out of here again, you're going to realize right away. And that's what they would do. And a lot of y'all don't understand the evil of this white man. Some of you that grew up in all black towns and never never went to college, never went to the military, and you've only been sheltered around. And not saying that's a bad thing. And you had never been around these Edomites in full force where you was the minority, meaning five, ten people, and it's just you. And then you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You, some of you have never really been through it. When you get your first call, you get woke up, oh, shoot. You realize how the layers of this man are very evil, very evil. Okay, Um, now 
uh, let's read on now. Small's chance of freedom. I'm just going. We're going to get through this. I'm taking now. Small's up. chance of f- chance at freedom had finally come with a plan as dangerous as it was brilliant. He quietly alerted the other enslaved crew members on board. Now, let me just say something. First of all, this was done for months. It wasn't just one night. Hey, hey, Tyrone, let's steal the ship. Uh, 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 uh. Now, don't let them. They planned this for weeks and months because how did they know? Like I was talking off some out in the rod up here. How do you communicate with someone that's in a different place without a cell phone? And you're a slave. You can't just go up to another slave's house. Hey, is, is, is Billy home? I need to tell him something. You had to get permission and papers to go talk to other slaves. They had to find out ways to password. Hey, make sure you tell them this at this time. Or, or slip a message, slip a, a written letter to this one to get that. All of that had to be done, and they had to know to keep the babies quiet. Make sure you're at this location at this time. And, it, and they couldn't have lanterns when they, they, they showed up all stealth-like. In the middle of the night, it was like 2, 3 in the morning. And they did it all before six before the before the uh, the sun came up. They planned it perfectly, and all of this was done because black men came together and got tired of oppression. That's what happened. Not just Robert Smalls. I wouldn't be surprised if they did it on a new moon, because that hey, would give natural light. There might be something to that. That's yeah. a damn mm-hmm. hey. That's a damn good uh, thought. And, and you know what? It had to be some sort of moonlight. Because um, you can't, if it was a doggone new moon, I mean a full, uh, a dark moon, which is a, uh, was it halfway through the month? Whenever it yes, is. Sir, yeah, you're yeah. not going to be able to see a damn thing. Okay? You can't see, And they didn't have street lights back then? Nope. And, uh, actually, that's not true. Some cities had street lights, but they would go off at a certain time, and actually some of it was gas-powered lanterns. Yes. So they didn't have the lights of today's New Orleans or New York or Miami. And they, if, if you had that in a ship, everybody, you gave your position away. They knew right away. That's why they had light, a lighthouse, had a light you could see from miles away. So these are things that we uh, take for granted. Robert had to overcome. Robert and the brothers with Robert had to overcome this. Uh, read on. It was time to seize the planter. The planter was that ship, that warship, that Confederate warship. Read on. Small's plan was to command, commandeer the planter and deliver it to the imposing fleet of Union ships anchored outside Charleston Harbor. Charleston, South Carolina. So there were Union ships that were off the coast because, remember, the South uh, was going to eventually be defeated by the North. So this is during the time of the Civil War. So what had happened is that Robert knew because he tracked all those waters. I got five checkpoints to get by. So I'm a I'm a I'm a first thing I'm gonna do is I'm a, I'm gonna make sure I got all my supplies, and make sure I let my family know. Then I gotta stop and pick my family up. I gotta coordinate that. Then after that, me and the brothers, we gotta make it by five different military checkpoints, naval checkpoints, and he had to get through all the checkpoints. Then if he made to the Union Army, that was freedom, going from one devil to another devil. All right. But still, he did get his freedom. And, and the the lesser of the devils was, was the, the north. They just a little bit they were more covert with their racism. Read on. These vessels were part of the blockade of a of all major southern ports. President Abraham Lincoln had initiated shortly after Fort Sumter fell in April 1861. All right. So the north started to encroach on the southern territory. Read on. As one of the largest ports in the Confederacy, Charleston was a lifeline for the South. It was a major military hub for the South, and they were trying to fight over that. Robert Smalls knew these things. He said, look, if I, he understood. He was, he was a man that understand uh, politics, too. Even though he was illiterate, he couldn't read or write, but he understand all this. That's how smart our people are. You are illiterate, you're a slave, and you knew enough to steal a warship, pick your family up, make it through five military checkpoints in the middle of the night and make it all the way to the Union Army with a Confederate ship and not get shot by them? You know how, in, you know how smart you have to be? You know how smart you have to be? He moved like a general with no military training. He was moving like a general, like Hannibal. That's some Hannibal-type war tactics right there. Yep. Read on. A largely agrarian society... The South depended on imports 
of war material, food, medicine, manufactured goods, and other supplies. With the U.S. Navy blocking the harbor, daring blockade runners looking to make hefty profits smuggled these goods into Charleston and carried cotton and rice out of the city in sale for the sale in European markets. Now, Robert had his ear to the, to the harbor. You know, you say ear to the street. Robert knew everything that was going on. That's why he earned the trust. How do you think those white soldiers and sailors who actually were abandonment of duty, they began to trust Robert. Remember Daniel earned the trust, right? Yep. That's just Robert. He don't bother. He, he's a good boy. He don't bother nobody. Matter of fact, he could drive the ship better than us, but we ain't going to worry about him. We're going to go get drunk. Or we come back. Robert will be right there. Robert played that BS. Okay, you could think of that about me. And he plotted the whole time. And, and, and when we say it like that, what he was doing was righteous. He was trying to get free of tyrannical oppression from the, from the north, uh, from the south. And then when he got to the north, he still uh, went through the same damn oppression. Um, now, that was it on that article. We run out of time. Get me, um, there is a, we're starting on his early life. We're, we're not going to get through all of his early life. I want you to go back to that article on the YouTube video uh, number six. And I want to show you something about um, how we get marginalized and clowned. It's an attack on black uh, masculinity and the, the defeating of the black superhero. And I'm going to show you that. Um, we can play that video when you get a chance. And like I said... Uh, we're going to do a couple parts next week. We're going to get into more about Robert Small, so y'all stay tuned. And we encourage all of you to research him on your own. All right, research him on your own. So uh, what the, one of the videos the guy said, the historian said, you can make any movie, it's great, but why didn't you make, uh, about a real su make a superhero movie about a real superhero? And he's 100% correct. So let's go ahead and play that, and then I have two, three examples to show you. Yes. This is the channel for you. America is very excited right now about a new movie that's out that stars a black superhero. Let's and of course, stop. pause. <laughs> so when he's talking about this, he's referring to the movie Black Panther. Because I started to do a little research and I said, when other than Adam Lightning, whatever the hell that was, there was a show about a dude named, uh, and that was really not. Not true super. He wasn't no Superman or no he didn't kick like at Batman, but Black Panther was the first real superhero that really did some damage. Now you might say Wesley Snipes and Blade, yeah, but he was a, he played a damn demon, like a like half vampire, whatever he was, a weird uh, type of yeah, he demon. Was a, he was a hybrid. He was half human, half vampire. Half human, half vampire. So, but I'm gonna tell you something. But Black Panther now. The white man had one reference. He only had one reference that he was able to reference a black superhero. Uh, pl play that movie again. Uh, play that again, please. The, the, the goofy uh, Edomite. That's notable because black lead roles are really fairly uncommon in Hollywood movies and black superhero roles even more rare. And with no disrespect whatsoever to that film, what Stop. I would say... Stop. I'm going to tell you something. So what he says is, and I had to listen to it because I caught it. I said, let me just listen to it again. So he mentions that black superhero movies and are very uncommon. And actually, they, they don't exist. But then he goes back and says, but that movie, meaning there is one that, that they gave you. And he tells you about it. And that movie's Black Panther. But when we look at all of the other movies, like, for example, we mentioned about Tyler Perry's movie, all the black men showed as being clowns, perverts, um, gigolos. Uh, then we had movies, we we're about to show two trailers. You had Blank Man, was a, a complete mockery and a disrespect. You had Hancock, who he actually had some powers, but he couldn't control them, and the white woman had to save him. So let's play the trailer um, Black Panther, because this is that movie that he was talking about. And to Officer Matt's point, Mikhail mentioned earlier, if you can make a movie as as well 
thought out as Black Panther, you can make a movie about Robert Smalls. Yep. And you damn sure we can make a movie about Judas Maccabee, about Elisha, Elijah, about all of the great men, Mattathias and his, his sons, about Christ, the Messiah, and the great works that he did, of course. All right, let's play Black Panther. This is the movie, that movie that he was referring to. The one superhero movie that you actually had, a legitimate superhero movie. Okay? I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. How much more are you hiding? My son, it is your time. Show me my respect and bow down. You get to decide what kind of king you are. And pause it real quick. This is the other thing that made me sick about Black Panther. All we hear about his mother and the whole damn legion of warriors were bald women. Yeah. Okay? So that's another thing that gets on my nerves. Uh, right? Why don't we know about Black Panthers? Do we know about his father? Did his yeah, father yeah, die? Yeah, his yeah, father yeah. died. He was, in the, uh, he was in the other Marvel movies, and his death spawned the Black Panther movie because then T'Challa took the crown. Okay. And then uh, the, the, his downfall, though, was Nakia. The black woman. The black woman. He wanted to keep Wakanda separate from everybody. Like, look, right. we got our own thing going. We don't need their problems. Mm -hmm. No, we got to help everybody. We got to help the world. Mm -hmm. And then he buckled down to that, and then that's how he ended up in all of the drama that he ended up in. And the whole point of us, and y'all watch it for your own, is that is that that, that, that THAT, that movie that he said was Black Panther. Uh, there were some other minor uh, sub characters, but Black Panther was like Spider Man. You, let's name some white ones: Spider Man, Hulk, Batman, Thor. All of them is all Caucasians. Yep. We got Black Panther. So he he said, "Well, you know, if you're gonna make that, you can make that." So just to point out that we had one movie, and what it did is, do you know when that that brother died? that children had, black kids had to go to psychologists because they finally had a hero that they were able to look up to. And you see brothers going like this in the movie theaters, and, and it, it gave some sort of a semblance of pride to the people in the world. Now, we know that in spirit, in the spirit like we saw, there was flaws in that movie, but it was nonetheless. It's nice to see black folks living in a separate community, thriving, powerful in positions of power, all the other, the, the feminist stuff there was sprinkled in. Hey, but Cap, they was actually nice to each other that whole week, black people. Yes. Yeah. Bla yeah. We was nice to each other that whole week. Like, we was walking around, hey, Wakanda forever. You know, as we give it, brother, the black power fist. I have never seen New Orleans so so, so cordial. Yeah. I'm going to say that I've never seen this city so cordial that they was, that whole week, it was just like, even when we went to the theater to see it ourselves, Cap. Yeah. We all went there with the garments on and brothers and sisters taking pictures. They looking at us like, man, who is this? And guess what? Nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. Everybody was looking at us. They was, hey, can we take a picture with y'all? Hey, what, what, what y'all do? We was talking to people. And it was short-lived. But still in all, that imagery gave our people, like you said, Cap, a semblance of pride. We was respectable to one another, which shows that it can happen. Esau capitalizes off of negative imagery, yeah. right. which is why it's needful for us to talk about men like Robert Smalls, because we need to instill that positive imagery back right. so that our actions can can replicate that. And, and to the point of Black Panther gave black kids hope. And when you give black children hope, they begin to see the potential that they, they can truly uh, live up to. Um, now... He doesn't have to say white superheroes because every other white, every other superhero is white. When you say superheroes, it's just white people. And then you have that black one. So he's just showing you. And he said, look, I, you, you, Wakanda is a made up place. Now, in the kingdom, we're going to be better than Wakanda. But Wakanda is, is fiction. Robert Smalls was fact. And it's so impressive what he did. It's more impressive than, than any. Uh, Nat Turner is very impressive, but. 
And the uprising in 1811 was very impressive. But this one particular act is so val- so much full of valor and, and just straight up, I, Deacon Malachi, balls. This, this brother had big doggone heart. He had a strong sense of courage. I'll say it like that. He was not afraid. He wasn't afraid to die. Um, get me Hancock and get me damn blank man. This is goes to show you. Go, plank, give me blank man first. This is quick. You going there, Cap? Yes, I'm going there. Oh man, not J five. So we gonna go to blank man. And the amazing thing is that we. It was funny. Parts of you know the brothers are funny. The Wayne's brothers. But the reality is, have you ever seen a white superhero depicted as that? Right. Uh, now there was a, a movie called the uh, show called um, American Hero. Those of you who are 45 and 50, you remember. Um, but they still made him powerful, okay? Um, it was cheesy filming, but they still made him powerful. Play. Here's what bold. He embodies it. Slap me around and call me Susan. <laughs> B is for brave. Save yourself. I'll never forget you, my lover. He <laughs> exemplifies it. B is for butt. He kicks it. Well? Damon Wayans. Thank you, Blank Man. Blank Man. Uh. Rated PG-13. So. Hey, Cap, I grew, at, up, <laughs> I grew up on that, Cap. I did. I grew up on that and and was was laughing right along with my dad and my uncles and all of them, man. But looking back, like, that's a mockery. Like, like Cap, even uh, we at least had something like Meteor Man. Remember Meteor Man? Yeah. Even that, like that, even that was a mockery because he he flew two feet off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> even that hey, was a mockery. What white superhero fly two feet off the ground? None. Even the Hulk who can't fly get to jump from island to island. We get Meteor Man with Robert Townsend. Is that his name? Yeah. Yep. Damn Robert Townsend. That, hey, I, and we, we ain't even gonna talk people. about Black Lightning. Black Lightning got a a, a, a sodomite daughter. daughter. Uh, he getting ran at home. Man, look, I, as soon as I saw, like, the first half of the season, I turned that <laughs> stuff off. But you know what, Cap? You know what they did? We had another hero, a good a good image, Luke Cage. Yep. Luke he Cage literally yes. broke Netflix. Like, he broke it one day when, when that stuff, it was so many people that was watching right. it that Netflix, like, shorted out. And it was, it was down for, like, a day or and, so. And didn't Luke Cage, didn't he lay with a white girl? Well, he, in real life, the, 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 the actor... He's 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 with a a, a white woman, but I, Luke I Cage think, himself. I think in one of the episodes, they have him laying with a white woman. Yeah, and so and I'm and, and not to minimize the officer, Matt. But our point is that we you see how we're straining. Oh, but what about him? Damn, he ain't no good. White people don't do that. Yeah, Thor, Hulk, Superman, Batman. You name, they got everybody. And what's crazy, Cap is Thor from a whole nother like planet, and this dude white. Like, you couldn't find hey, all the color? Like, come on, man. The right. brother's job in Thor, as bad as he looked, as tough as he was, he had to guard the gate that Thor went out to the other world. Right. That was his job. He looked mean as hell. And your job, you got to, you open the door. You the doorman for Thor. Damn. You the, internet, you the intergalactal damn doorman. Damn. Think about that. And y'all really think about that. His job is to make sure Thor gets... Back and forth in the house and out of it from world to world. Damn. Galaxy to galaxy. I Damn. just thought about that. Hey, Cat, what about Steel with Shaq? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> y'all, y'all, see, y'all see what we're dealing with, right? So the point is this, brothers, is that we have a real life. The white man said it. Robert Smalls was a real superhero. During a war that was supposed to free the slaves, Robert Smalls stole a Confederate warship from underneath the enemy's noses, picked up multiple families at night with babies and children, made it through five checkpoints, naval checkpoints, which are basically uh, lighthouses, and you had to, he had to do certain things with his, with, his, with his mannerisms to represent a captain. Then he got all the way to open seas and made it all the way to the Union Army, which is the North, and the sister helped out, and they didn't even get shot because those those Confederate boats had Confederate flags, and when they see you coming, kill them, cannonballs, and they got free. So, 
play that Hancock. <clears throat> Suspects on northbound 110. Boy, yeah. Fire we need backup. Fellas, give yourselves up quietly. Okay. latest act of so-called heroics has once again enraged city officials. I can smell that liquor on your breath. Because I've been drinking. Jackass. Call me a jackass one more time. Jackass. And you see, you pause real quick. You see, the, the way that he got grounded and figured out who he was was from white men. White women helped him to pass. And I think it was a white man, too, that kind of guided him. So here's a black man with all this strength, all this power, but he's dumb as hell and you don't know who he is. Hey, Cap. Who does that represent? You got all this power and all this physical strength, but you need the white women to validate you, and you're confused. And you turn to liquor. They're showing you what white America thinks about black men. You're strong as hell, you don't know who you are, and you need us to complete yourself. Do y'all see what they're doing to us? But then you put Will Smith in it because he's he summer, summer, summertime, sit back and then wine. He's from Philly. Or surely a bunch of our, our people Will Smith should be ashamed of himself for doing it. He got a lot of money, a lot of money, so whatever. Now look at his children. Will Smith, repent, brother. You raised a child that uh, a young prince who now is trying to be a princess, brother. Come on, man. Come on, brother. You better than that. We all we all of us looked up to you, Will Smith. You know what I mean? Hey Cap. The the thing about Hancock is he had all that strength, all that power, and eternal life as long as he stayed away from that white woman. Damn. When he got around her, all of those powers diminished, and he became normal. Wow. <laughs> Big message there. You better leave them girls alone. So you saying that the white woman was Hancock's kryptonite? Yes. As so long as he stayed away from her... her he was strong. He was doing all of that. So message to you brothers at home. That's a, a message in a movie. Your, these other nations take your spiritual power away from you. That's why you got to marry an Israelite woman. That's right. Okay, when, when people say you marry a black woman, now nah, black, Puerto Ricans are black, Dominicans are black. M even Mexicans, believe it or not, they call, they're classified as black. Native American, same thing. We got different variations. The 12 tribes of Israel, marry your own kind. Marry your race. Marry your nation. Okay? And when Hancock, that's, a, that's another layer of, they, they show you something in that. They show you something in that. All right? Yeah, yeah. Just Robert like, Smalls married his own. Which yeah, I was going to say, just like Eddie Griffin said in the uh, Undercover Brother, stay away from white she-devil. Yeah. Robert Smalls married his own. Yep. Created a, uh, created a family. And then... Hatched a plan to rescue that family. That's a hero. That is what you call a hero. Yep. And he was real, from a real place, in real slavery. That's heavy, man. And, and we're going to touch on him again next week. We, uh, there's one other article I wanted to touch on just to kind of summarize. Um, well, uh, you know, I'll do the, I'll do the soldier. Because later on in life, what happened to he became, uh, next week, we're going to go into the fact that he actually became uh, a naval, um, I think, made captain. Then he got transferred to the Army. He held a lot of rank in the U.S. military. Then he got out, and he actually became a very, very successful businessman. He created in his own newspaper. He created a, a type of, uh, 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 it wasn't a train, and it was like a trolley-type industry he created. He also became a senator and a congressman and helped to change many, many laws that helped black people. So next, before, before actually, there's one other thing. So he, when he got free and, and turned the warship into the Union Army, he got a chance to get the audience with Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln and Robert Smalls was the brother, the brother that convinced through his persuasion of his heroic acts to get black men to join the, human ar the, the Union Army to get pay. So he actually was a 
big part of blacks being integrated in the U.S. Army. I actually being a, they were they were not, they were they were separated. They were not up until World War II. Then the Korean War, we were still different units. World War II, all that. But he um, was a huge part of of black men being able to serve in the army, and 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 a lot of laws were done that. So we're gonna get into that next week, definitely next week. Um, and uh, you know what? It's eleven o'clock. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. We're gonna wrap up. Um, Next week, join us. We're going to go into uh, Robert Small's uh, military life after he escaped the um, with the slave ship. And we're going to get into his political life and also his business life and what he did. He did a lot. He did a lot for, we might have to do a three-part series because there's so much about this brother. And I didn't want to just rush through it and tell you everything at one time. So, Lord's will, y'all, y'all check us out next week. Um, all praises to the Mosai. So, we got some of Smikiel. I think we have our. Hey, Shalom, Israel. Hey, look, if y'all want to continue to see these shows and shows like this, give alms. Because guess what? This Bible is a true book. Y'all saw it tonight in the comment section. The word cannot be gainsaid nor resisted. So the Bible is a true book. So if y'all want to continue hearing the truth, seeing the truth, give alms. And let's push this truth to the four corners of the earth. Y'all can give alms to the uh, Precept Upon Precept at iuic.neworleans at israelunite.org. And also make sure y'all are supporting the Booster Club. Give to iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. Israel United in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United of Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. All praise to the Most High. Listen, Israel, y'all support that Matthew 2.13 project. It's big time. When you saw Captain Get Alive playing the angel, you saw uh, Officer Joe, uh, Joe Helm. I can't pronounce it, but it looked like Bishop Beard. Um, that thing is powerful. And this is number one of many more biblical movies that are professionally done. Y'all give to that. And look, you brothers in Israel who are editors, we need y'all to create not just movies in the truth, because we need all of that. We can also create other types of history, like Robert Smalls, bring light to the fact that a lot of our forefathers who were slaves fought against oppression and rose up and were used their intelligence in many ways to overcome and get free. Now, were they 100% understood? They were Israelites and understood? No. But they fought with what they had, and we, we should remember them and win people to the truth. And guess what? Esau is trying to stick this critical race theory to you. And when you make movies like that, it's, it's undeniable because ha- they have to deal with the history. And then by, by us showing that, you make your people deal with their history. And that's something we, we, we do not want to lose because this connects us to the Bible. Look, it's late. We thank you for joining us uh, to stay with another edition to Precept Upon Precept. Uh, we are your hosts. Join us next week, Robert Smalls, uh, part two. Uh, I'm Captain Shem and the brothers to the left. Officer Matthew. Officer Mikael. All praise to the Most High. Thank you for joining us on Precept Upon Precept. I need a third cup of coffee, y'all. Y'all stay tuned. And Tech Team, shout out. Thanks for being patient with us. They're getting better. With that, we say shalom. 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 You listening to Precept on Precept. Captain Shim, break it down to no meat left. Line upon line in the word, make you respect. History collegiate, when we teach it, brains reset. You listening to precept on precept. Captain Shim, break it down to no meat left. Line upon line, the word make you respect. History collegiate, when we teach it, brains reset. Putting in the work for the most high. Valley of the bones coming back and we gon' ride. Showing you our past didn't start with that boat ride. We a nation made of kings, yeah, we chose right. Bringing our identity back. We the praise of the Lord, they pretend to be that. You shoot it is something special, they can never be that. We raise avengers with the knowledge so our enemies crack. In fact, listen to the class in the topic. Bomb subject matter, break down.
Cause the time